What's up, everybody? This is Steve Sterlachi. I'm fresh back from NAM 24. And then just talk about a couple things. Um, I had a great time. And I keep seeing this. It's like every year somebody has to do some weird stuff like this where they come out with these NAM is dead videos. And um, just wanted to offer my thoughts about it, share a little bit about my NAM story and what I saw that I thought was cool. So if you saw my video last year, I almost didn't make it to NAM last year. And unfortunately, my travel woes continued into this year. If you're following me on Instagram at Stalach, you'll have seen that I had a little bit of trouble getting there again. And I actually was on a, on the plane and for the first time in my life, walked off the plane because I was going to miss my connecting flight from Detroit to Anaheim. I quickly was looking through the Delta app, finding other option, other options to get there, and there were none. So I decided to go home. Now, Wednesday night, I rebooked my flight for Thursday morning, same identical flight. I get a text at 7 p.m. or so, your flight's been canceled. <laughs> I wound up figuring it out. I'll just skip to the end here. I did figure it out. I wound up finding another airport that had the same connection from Detroit to Anaheim. So when I landed in Detroit, of course, first flight actually was on time. Now I'm trying to sprint to the airport. Of course, we land at gate A12 and I have to go to A77 on the opposite side of the airport. So I'm trying to book it over there. There's a train up top, but that kind of freaks me out. I don't want to trust any technology. If I'm late, it's going to be on my own terms. So thankfully I made that flight and I also got upgraded to first class, which was absolutely awesome. I've never experienced that before where I was, you know, had the full reclining chair really was awesome. Got to sleep on the plane and then wake up there refreshed. And then it was Nam city. Now it's time to go to work. Let's do it. <laughs> So once we finally got into the showroom, we got to experience what NAM is now. And like I said, a lot of people think that NAM is dead, but if you had been to NAM prior to 2020, 2020 was the last like huge NAM right before the pandemic hit. And before that, I'd got I've gone every year. I hadn't missed one yet uh, since 2015 or 16. So NAM used to be mayhem. Absolute mayhem. Like so crowded. There was, it was full of booths. There was not a single available space. It used to be fully sold out. I believe nowadays it's, there's a lot more empty space. There's a lot of black curtains that are blocking off areas. Even the basement's not open and there's even food courts in the middle now. And I think that this is a good thing. The way that NAM used to be, I think was just like borderline unsafe <laughs> because it was so crowded and so hectic and so crazy. It was so hard to actually get business done. And for me, that's why I go. That's why most people go to NAM is to conduct business. If not many people just go to NAM to to just look at what's new, I would think that the point of NAM is to network, make connections, and work on deals. So for me, being a YouTube channel here and a touring guitarist, I'm looking for people that want to work together on some content. And this new NAM is so much better for that. It seems like they're more into doing creator events and having content creators featured in things. I have no complaints about the current NAM. I was more productive in these few days at NAM than I have ever been at NAM. There were still plenty of people that were able to walk around, see the new gear, and try out the new gear, like like always. But what I find is missing <laughs> the weird people of Nam. Like there's always like there was always like the the hashtag the people of Nam where everybody would film the the kind of freak show that would be going on at Nam because people always would dress up in crazy outfits and be doing crazy things. Thankfully that's gone. I thought that kind of like like dumbed down Nam and made it less serious and less professional. Um, this new Nam I feel like is all business and it's fun. There's no like crowds to fight with and it's just more professional is the best way that I would put it. Nam's not dead. Nam is just different, and I'm all for it. 
So let's get into some of my highlights. So leading off, the handsome gentleman that you saw with me is Johnny Lee, uh, was my roommate. This is like the third or fourth name that we've roomed together, and he is a great guy, has a great YouTube channel you should go check out. So I'm just going to bang through some of my videos here. So we spent a lot of time at the Black Star booth. They announced the new ID series of amps. Like there's, a, there's three different sizes. My buddy Steve Marks, their demo guy, one of the best in the business. Uh, this is him getting interviewed by Guitar World, demoing the new products. If you haven't checked out the amp one, two, and three. Um, just awesome, awesome products. I've got two of those. I've got one and I've got three uh, here in the studio that I've done demos for. That's another thing about NAM is that it's not always about new products. A lot of times it's about getting your hands on a piece of gear that you never were able to get your hands on before. The next one I have on my list here is Kemper. So you, if you hadn't seen, I did a Kemper player review where I did my initial impressions as somebody that has all of the modeling gear. This was my first Kemper product. I paid for it and got it shipped to me right away. Um, that was something I really wanted to not like. And I wanted to be like, yes, I ma I've made the right decision not going with Kemper for the longest time. And I was just, you know, fell flat on my face once I plugged into this thing because it really sounds great. I even took a couple of my other modeling, digital modeling friends over. I was like, I'm not going to say anything. Just plug in and see because they had a whole setup with the headphones and the iPads. They had a nice booth, really nice booth. And I was like, just give me your initial impressions. And everybody that was there was like, oh, yeah, it just sounds great. Um, we'll see what happens with that, with the updates and stuff, because that's been the biggest critique so far is the paid upgrades and uh, what's going to be possible in there. I do believe that, I mean, just theoretically, uh, theoretically just, um, just gossiping here, I would think that the paid upgrade is going to allow you to just use more effects. So for example, if seven effects get added to the big Kempers, then only three of those are going to make it into the player. But the chip is able to handle all seven. So I think what we're going to see is an unlocking of the player. So the player is going to be able, be able to handle more complex signal chains and all of the effects that the big brother has. I hope so, at least. I mean, that's what I would, that's what I would think. If it can wind up doing profiles, that would be great. But from what I've heard, that is not going to be the case. My next stop was the Boutique Amps distribution booth. The reason I'm doing the video like this also is because you can't get proper footage at NAMM. There are people that walk around with mobile recording rigs and they record themselves playing the gear. Um, I'm not doing any of that. Um, I'd rather do this where I come back and talk about it. So this is the Boutique Amps distribution booth and they carry Diesel, Friedman, Synergy, uh, Tone King. Basically all of the best Boutique Amps are distributed by Boutique Amps distribution. So I saw this diesel that I thought was cool. And I mean, I don't know if this is new. This is new to me. I hadn't seen this. I don't know if this was released there, but this is the VH4 with digital effects in it and this cool digital screen. So they're kind of moving to this hybrid model of having a smaller amp and all of these knobs coordinate to something here to uh, effects or anything of the like. Um, it looks really cool and I'm sure it's going to sound great. The diesel stuff, you know, the diesel stuff sounds great. I didn't need to plug that in an amp to figure that out. And then we moved on to probably the highlight, the coolest piece of gear for me. This is Soldano. So if you know my videos, I've got my SLO 30 right behind me always. It's my favorite amplifier probably that I have, um, even compared to the vintage ones. I just love that you can get everything out of the SLO. And they just released this, or they didn't release, I guess, but they announced the X88 IR. And this is something that we're going to need to talk about. So this was a big piece of gear in the 80s. This is like the famous 80s rig that kind of put Mike Soldano on the map was this rack mounted three channel amp. And I'm not 100% sure on what the, the old one was. I'm not totally studied up on it, but this is considered to be the new version of that. So it's got all the Soldano goodness in a rack mounted head. But not only that, it is a preamp. So you, you're, this is meant to be plugged into a cabinet and have all this stuff uh, built on board here. But what this has added, it's added a headphone amp and it's also added an IR loader. So you can have six IRs loaded into this or you can import third party IRs. There's gonna be software that goes with this and it's all MIDI controllable. And to me, this is kind of a uh, the future of amps because you're getting a really amazing, legendary tube amp sound in a compact rack format. I mean, you could take this, like literally this rack, it could be your whole rig. Um, you don't need a cabinet with this. You could literally take this and a pedal board, put this in a rack and take something like the Line 6 HX effect, something small, something light, and uh, have an ultimate, like 
oh, I can't wait to try this. I hope I get to try this because this, this looks just incredible to me. And aside from here, they also carry the Synergy stuff, which is, I, I call it like a VCR. And I covered this with my buddy Johnny also. Um, where This is basically like a VCR and little tapes. So they put whole amps in these little tapes and it's got tubes in the tape. I could calling it tape. It's not actually tape, just for reference. It's a little uh, cartridge, whatever you want to call it. You put the cartridge in and it gives you the amp sound. Um, this is not new. Synergy has been around for a while, but I believe that they keep adding more and more amps to it. And they also carry Wampler and stuff and they, you know, all of that stuff. But that's the stuff that really caught my eye. Also Friedman, I've got a Friedman IRX here on loan from my buddy Nick Bukovalis that I'm going to be doing a demo of. I also stopped by the Enya booth. Enya has been a supporter of the channel for a while. I've done a bunch of videos for them. So that was nice to see them. Probably the place I spent the most time was here at the Bad Cat booth. So Bad Cat and I have always kind of, we've, we've kind of flirted for a long time on whether or not we're going to work together. And um, I've always wanted to, I've always been a big fan of their stuff and it, was really cool to reconnect with them and check out what's new at their booth. So there was a couple things here that we need to talk about. They are now uh, representing Ampete. And if you don't know what Ampete is, it's a eight channel switching amp selector. So for my setup here, I've got all my amp heads right here off screen. And um, this is definitely something that I could use in the studio. This would make my workflow, oh my God, so much faster, so much easier. Other things at this booth, and I did not know that they were together, Bad Cat also now has this Rubicon, which is a little powerhouse here, and it's another amp that's implementing this Two Notes technology into it, which is amazing. Two Notes makes the best load box, in my opinion, just in a way that you're able to use it. The software, the cabinet software built into this, you see the Two Notes logo at the bottom, is just awesome. And you've got a 2EL84 amp, it's a two-channel go down to one watt or 25 watt for power scaling, or you can just turn it off and go direct with the two note software. So Bad Cat was a huge highlight for me. I also got to see my buddy Shredder, the New York Nags guy, the one that <laughs> the one that loaned me my Nags guitars. Stevie! Great friend. Also, if you went to NAM this year and you didn't stop by the Airstream booth that is Quilter, you definitely missed out. Quilter makes some of the best FRFR type of speakers. I mean, if you're a digital modeling user, if you're going to be one of these people that's loading down an amp signal and you want to reamplify it, you can't go wrong with Quilter. They're loud, they're proud, they're light. Now this, I feel like, was a pretty high, highly anticipated thing. This is the Magnetone Slash amp. And obviously, unless you're living under a rock, you saw that Slash didn't switch over, but he added Magnetone to his signature amp list. This thing sounded immense. I got to watch Marco Fanton play it, who is another digital modeling user. Uh, has a very good channel, has a bunch of stuff up there, but he was just you know, kind of ripping through this, went through all the channels and was just, it sounded great. You know, just standing right next to this 412 was awesome. So now upstairs, you would find PV, who just released the Classic 20. Classic line of amplifiers has been around forever. I remember my first NAM show, actually, that was Backline Amp, uh, the Hilton stage downstairs that I played. So PV always has a special place in my heart. Uh, they also have all of the com all of their little amps are now in combo. So they came out with all little amp little versions of all their amps, and now they're all in combos. They also brought back the Vandenberg guitars, which they had on display, and they were uh, easy access if you wanted to play them. Uh, they played really great. They also added some new bases. Look at the quilt top on this. How awesome is that? I also saw my friends at Graph Tech who came out with this new non-slip nut that is supposed to be the greatest thing for a tremolo users. GraphTech always has such cool innovative stuff. So if, you if you're not familiar with GraphTech stuff, you really got to get, get on that because um, Dave Dunwoody, what a genius. He makes amazing products and now his stuff is becoming standard on so many high-end guitars. Also went up to Yamaha and this is kind of where the fun ended because I didn't get any new Line 6 gear. Um, Line 6 just had a small corner in the back of Yamaha. I didn't even bother filming it. It just was I get it. They're just displaying products, but if they have nothing to show, I guess it's not worth having a huge booth. But I did get to see my buddy Jay Leonard J up there jamming the new Pacificas. They look awesome. They're high-end Japanese-made Pacificas, really high spec, and they played and sounded really good. Also, some big news from Jackson Ampworks. If you have followed me for a long time, I used to be a Jackson Ampworks artist. Um, what feels like a million years ago now at this point, um, I unfortunately had to sell my Jackson McFly because I went ampless. Obviously, if you watch the channel, you know that. But um, it looks like they're kind of feeling out people for what they want amp-wise and seeing if they want to make a comeback with some amps. 
Um, Keith Urban used one on the on an award show, it looks like, around The Voice, whatever that appearance was. And uh, it seems to be drumming up some new interest. But the main story here at Jackson is that they are licensing Full Tone. So all of the Full Tone stuff has been, Full Tone's been gone for a couple of years. They kind of closed doors and uh, closed up shop. But it looks like Jackson Ampworks is going to be licensing and taking over production uh, using the Full Tone name, bringing back all their classic circuits and more good stuff for the guitar community. I mean, Full Tone have been a staple on so many people's boards and everybody everybody that uses them always loves them. And I think so far the favorite guitar that I saw was definitely the Rabia Signature. I had never really never really dove into Ernie Ball guitars much because I feel like they're they're small and they're kind of hard for I have big hands. Look at my hands. So playing an Ernie Ball never really fit well with my hands, but um, I was trying the Rabia Signature, who is not a small person. Um, he's just a gigantic human all around. Uh, like he's got to be two and a half heads taller than me. And um, his guitar felt great, had like a real Les Paul feeling neck. I really liked the satin finish on it. And that was probably the highlight of guitar for me. That was probably the best guitar that I played was the uh, the Rabia Signature at the Ernie Ball booth and definitely made me second guess my thoughts on Ernie Ball guitars. Maybe I'll look into them a little bit more. And I think that just about does it for for things I liked at NAMM. What's some stuff that you saw that you would love me to try to cover on the channel? I would love to hear your feedback on what's awesome. Maybe some stuff that I missed. But yeah, if you made it this far in the video, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.